we are ready for kickoff here at Harris Field. Belmont is going to kick the ball off. Jack Townsend, the number 10, steps to midfield with the ball. Belmont probably going to look to kick this long. See if they can put some pressure on the Algonquin squad. And here we go, folks. There's the whistle. We are underway at Harris Field. Jack. Yes, does go long indeed. Nice kick. Fielded well there by Algonquin. Finds a seam. Out to the 20, 22 and a uh, high tackle called there. Of course, in rugby, you can't tackle above the shoulders. You have to go low. You have to wrap up. Algonquin sending their forwards, crashing ahead. Rucking well, clears the ball. Belmont trying to force them out. Won't happen. Algonquin moves the ball back the other way. Crashes in, big forward pod. Met there by Belmont. Good line speed by the Marauders. And again, Belmont defense up quickly. The Algonquin backs have a go. Not much there. And the ball is held in by the Belmont defender. Therefore, the Algonquin player could not release it. Not releasing is the call, and Belmont forces the penalty. So Jack will try to kick this penalty kick into touch. And he does find touch. That'll give uh, Belmont the line out uh, at, about the, uh, at about the 10. So very good attacking position here for the Marauders who will throw the ball in. So when the ball goes out of bounds or into touch, as we say in rugby speak, uh, there is a line out formed and the ball is thrown in. Tamara says, hey, the captain doing the throwing, nice line by Belmont. They form the mall, driving the Marauders. Now at the five. Ball's held there, and it's out into the back line. Jack to Jediah. Belmont Rucks. Good ball control. Billy Hendrickson crashes ahead. The ball goes wide. Good tackle there by Algonquin. Belmont able to ruck well. Zach Zadem crashes ahead. Billy again with the ball. Good carry. Good phases. James McGovern, the scrum half, has a go. Gets tackled and pulled into the ruck. Belmont forwards crash ahead, looking to reset. And again, the pick and go. Belmont settles. Wesley finds a seam, makes a meter. Now the ball comes wide. Jediah out to Wyatt. Wyatt into the corner, scores the try for Belmont. Beautiful ball movement there. Belmont controlling the phases, pulling the defense of Algonquin in and then spinning the ball wide where there was space, finding uh, Wyatt Sclafani on the outside who scores the try in the corner. Jack Townsend, the fly half, will do the kicking. And uh, for those unfamiliar, uh, the, the kick is taken directly out, directly out from where the try is scored.
So this is a difficult kick because the try was scored uh, out in the corner. But Jack has a very sure foot. Lines it up. And it goes just left. So the score here with four and a half minutes gone, Belmont five, Algonquin nothing. And unlike in American football, uh, in rugby, uh, in rugby on the kickoff, the team that has score has been scored upon kicks to the team that has scored. Algonquin sends the ball back wide. Owen, nice kick as he was hit. Finds a, a little hole there behind the defense. Belmont trying to ruck counter ruck over. Unable to, Algonquin controls it. Now Belmont creating a maul by holding the player up. He can't go to ground. And Belmont forcing a scrum down with that beautiful defensive play, holding the Algonquin player up, controlling the mall. And it'll be a scrum down to Belmont here at the 44. Your scrum for Belmont in the front row, Zach Zadem, Wesley Thompson, and at tight head, Enzo Passos. Second row, Tamara Sahay. Ignacio De La Fuente. Your wing forwards are Bryce Hubbard and Billy Hendrickson, and your eight man is Josh Christensen. Belmont wins the scrum, feeds the back line. Jack to Jediah. Jediah through. Jediah hit at the 30. Belmont sends it weak side. Zach. Zach keeps his legs moving. Wes. Looks like the ball was th thrown forward there in that transfer between Zach and Wes. And it'll be scrummed down to Algonquin. So when the ball gets knocked forward in rugby, that's one of the situations in which the scrum is called, the most frequent situation in which the scrum is called. And the team that has uh, knocked on the ball turns it over to the other team who uh, feeds the ball into the scrum. Hey. Strong scrum by Belmont. Driving Algonquin off, but they managed to feed the ball out. Mishandled there in the backfield. Tackled well by Belmont. Algonquin managed to gather. Send the ball crashing ahead. And now we'll look to clear, but Belmont is, Belmont defensive pressure very strong there. Forcing Algonquin back towards their own try line. And the ball knocked on by Algonquin. So Belmont scrum here at the five meter. Very, very strong position for Belmont. Be surprised if the boys don't come away with some points. Belmont scrum, strong, holds. Algonquin drives back. Let's go, Joshua! Josh picks and goes off the back of the scrum. Drives forward. Belmont controls. Ball comes out low to Wesley. Gathers it. Goes into contact. And Belmont recycles. Belmont, not in any hurry here. 
Wants clean ball. Here it is, the forwards. Zach gets the call, crashes over, and scores the try. Zach Zadem supported by a host of Belmont forwards, powers over the try line, and another five points for the Marauders. And once again, the ball comes uh, directly out from where it was placed in the touch zone. And Jack Townsend missed his first one, but this one is a decidedly easier kick for Jack. Of course, I've probably jinxed him with that. And it's good. So that puts seven points on the board for Belmont, making the score 12 to nothing, Marauders, here with 10 minutes gone in the first half. Play 35 minute halves in high school rugby, 40 minute halves at every other level. and uh, have a very good question from uh, our spectators here. The, the clock keeps running. Uh, unless there's a significant injury on the pitch uh, or another reason that the ref would stop it. But, oh, the 15 from Algonquin slices Belmont up. Oh, and is caught there by Wyatt. Gathers the ball again, continues to go. Algonquin. Oh, Algonquin, the number 15 for Algonquin. David Downey absolutely cutting the Belmont defense to ribbons. But unfortunately, unfortunately knocked on there by Algonquin, which gives Belmont the scrum and an almost sure uh, score avoided there by the bobble. So Belmont will try to clear it out here. Ball comes cleanly to the Marauders. And there's kick, which grubs along. Ah, the 11, John Lozu from Algonquin gathers it up. And the boys in white are on the attack here at the 35, sending their big forwards crashing ahead. Well tackled by Belmont. Belmont defense, very stingy all season. Algonquin rucks well. Sends it out again. The big three, Jack Cheney, crashes ahead. And the ball comes to the backs. Belmont defense holding strong. Zach strips the ball. Ah. Uh, Call's not releasing. Don saw something I didn't there. And uh, Algonquin chooses to crash the ball ahead. The big number eight for Algonquin, Preston Biamu. And again, Belmont gets over that ball, holds it in. <clears throat> Looked like that was Josh Christensen. A little hard to see from here who uh, forced that turnover. So, Jack Townsend to clear for Belmont. And he finds touch. Nice nudge by Jack. 
Your backs for Belmont this evening at scrum half, James McGovern. Fly half, Jack Townsend. Inside center, Jediah. Colin Green at outside. Your wings are Owen Johnson and Ethan Yu, and at fullback, Wyatt Sclafani. Nice line out right in front of the camera here. Tamara to Billy. Out. Nice run. Ball comes. Goes right to the backs. Bobbled by Belmont. So knocked on by Belmont. Mishandled. And it'll be scrummed down to Algonquin with 15 minutes gone here in the first half. As predicted, a nice crowd uh, filtering in here. <laughs> Belmont steals the hook. Jack finds some space behind. Belmont's in chase. Saves it in. <laughs> there are two calls on the field. There's uh, both a call, the ball into touch. Okay, yep, we're gonna have a line out. The ball did go into touch. They're very close to being knocked back into play. But it'll be Belmont line out here at the 20 playing in. Wouldn't be surprised to see them all here from Belmont. And indeed, they do go to the mall. Belmont with a powerful mall. Ball comes out. There's Jack. Sends Jediah crashing ahead. <clears throat> Jediah keeps his feet, continues to move. Settles there. Belmont at the five. And unfortunately, uh, Jediah down on the pitch. So this is one of those situations where uh, the clock will stop and we'll uh, get some uh, trainer attention on the pitch. Coach Bruce out there with Sarkis. When the ref blows the whistle. Okay, I did do it, but I want to make sure Yeah, when the ref blows the whistle, yeah. And then he'll blow it again, and you can start it again. Oh, unfortunate to see Jediah. Looks like he got a little shaken up. He is walking back, though. And... He's indicating that he's just a little shaken up. And he's uh, good to continue. So that's encouraging news for the Marauders. And we're glad to see that Jediah was not seriously injured there. So it'll be scrum down to Belmont playing in. Oh, they go weak side. There's James to Jediah. Jediah carries some Algonquin players with him. Ball comes cleanly. Let's go, 
And Zach again over the try line. Big, powerful run. Beautiful play for another Belmont score. Halfway through the first half. And the Marauders in pretty good control of this one so far. Well, we've been calling their names as play uh, ensues, but let's go through the Algonquin lineout. Loosehead prop at number one, Ivan Diaz. Your hooker is Zach DeRoche. Number three, Jack Cheney. Number four, Grady Martinick. Number five, Ben Friedberg. Wing forwards, Will Johnston and Logan Much. And your eight man, Preston Biamu. So that kick good to make it 19 nothing Belmont. And once again, Algonquin will kick off. So the Belmont girls rugby team has arrived and uh, we can always tell when the noise level increases because they're here. Boys and girls teams do a lot to support one another over the course of the season. And as we mentioned earlier, really is one, one community. And again, Algonquin number 15, David Downey, once again running hard. Going to ground and picking up that ball and going again, making meters. Ball comes out. Algonquin backs, carry. But Belmont gets over the ball and once again, is able to force the penalty by holding the ball in against the tackle player. So that player cannot release. Very smart heads up play by Belmont. High rugby IQ on the pitch this evening. So Jack with the safe nudge into touch and Belmont will have the line out playing in at the 43. Belmont line, clean. Billy off the top. Comes into Zach, makes the gain line and then some. James feeds it out. Jack, Jediah, Wyatt, Owen. Met there, hard, double tackled. But Belmont manages to clean the ball. Pick and go. Well played by Belmont. Crashing some forwards ahead. Well played, nice kick. Nice kick. Oh, which goes into touch. Good idea by Jack, seeing some space on the left side of the field. Sending a low kick rubbing through, but Belmont unable to get there. And it'll be Line out to Algonquin. Oh, no. Ref says that uh, the Algonquin player touched the ball. So it'll be line out to Belmont here.
And Belmont again with the mall. Powerful attacking platform. Belmont driving, driving. They could drive all the way over the, over the try line here. But no, it goes to ground. Jack with a beautiful dummy. <laughs> Finds the seam and in for the try. Jack Townsend, absolutely beautiful play. Show and go. Energy certainly picking up here at uh, Harris Field, even if the temperature is dropping. Yeah, it's gone from a nice sunny, cool spring day to downright cold here in the shade at Harris. And those folks that showed up in shorts are wishing they had worn their sweatpants this evening. So Jack lines up the conversion and slots it through easily. Making it 26 to nothing. Marauders with 24 minutes gone here in the first half of this, uh, this one. High kick to midfield. Fielded well there. Colin. Kicks forward. Makes the tackle. Nice play. Algonquin on the attack. Number five runs hard ahead. Not much there for him. And again, they send it out to the forwards. But the Belmont line quickly into the backfield, shutting things down. Marauders no, and the ball is turned over. Oh, unfortunately, Belmont offside, so. Algonquin with the penalty kick. And nice touch finder there by the Algonquin number 10, Nick Southey. So Algonquin line out here at the 47. Playing in. Belmont. Uh, Looked like Belmont may have held a player up too long. I'm not sure what that call is. But uh, whatever it was, I'm sure Don had it right. And Algonquin taps and goes. Giving it to the big... Number one, Ivan Diaz, who runs hard ahead. And another penalty, not releasing the tackle player. Good tackle by Billy Hendrickson. Josh Christensen. Good tackle for Belmont. Algonquin crashing ahead. Belmont defense responding. The backs have it for Algonquin. Gain line is made, but not much more. Double tackle by the Marauders. Preston Diamu.
Enzo with the tackle. Nice ball control by Algonquin here, able to string some phases together. But not getting much in terms of uh, meters made. Algonquin back line has another go. Once again, the Belmont defense holds. Belmont counter rucking. Belmont defense. Holding the player up, manages to offload. And Algonquin resets. Good tackling by the Marauders. Wyatt Sclafani with an absolutely beautiful gather of a kick from Algonquin. And Wyatt losing a couple of tacklers and able to make it out almost to the 45 before the ball's uh, sent back to around the, the 40. Belmont seeing some space behind, sends a high kick forward. Handled well there. High tackle called on uh, on Belmont. It's a good call. Really have to keep the tackling low in, in rugby. Refs, especially at the high school le level, uh, very, very focused on safety in the game, in all phases of the game, but especially in tackling. So, that ball does not find touch for Algonquin. Belmont sends it high in the air ahead the Algonquin 13 manages to, and that's held up by Belmont. The player held up, the mall formed, and Don Jennings will blow that dead for a Belmont scrum. Beautiful, again, beautiful, smart heads up rugby by the Marauders, forcing the turnover. And we have an injured Belmont player. That looks like Wesley shaking up on the play. youngest member of the Belmont community having arrived with the Barron's family. Coach Timmy and Jess arriving with a little one in tow. And scrum down. Belmont controlling the scrum. James feeds the ball back. Nice kick. Good clearance. Finding touch all the way out. Josh Christensen with a beautiful covering run down the field as Algonquin put that ball in quickly from the touch. And Belmont able to force Algonquin back into their half of the field. 
Algonquin seeing some space behind. No, they try to run forward. There's the kick. Wyatt smartly understanding he's not, oh. But then the bobble, unfortunately, by Belmont there. So knocked on by, by Belmont, it'll be scrummed down. Time on. So, Algonquin with the scrum. Pass out to the backs, skip to the 15. Able to get the ball out, but bobbled there. There's a battle for it. Algonquin rucking well, cleans it. Ball comes out. Algonquin again, sending their forwards ahead. Billy Hendrickson, one of the fiercest tacklers on the team, having none of it. Belmont defense, again in the backfield. Algonquin, putting some phases together. Nice ball out to the backs. They go left, nice pass, finds a little space, but forced into touch on the far side. And that's the half, folks. Welcome back to Harris Field, everybody, for the second half of this MIAA uh, interdivisional uh, game between Belmont and Algonquin Regional High School. I'm joined by a very special guest, uh, girls coach Kate McCabe. Kate, yeah. great to have you here. Thanks for having me, Pete. I'm gonna try and live up to the standards that you keep here, so. Well, I'm easily surpassed. It's a low bar, and I'm <laughs> sure you're gonna do great. Uh, I don't know, I'll try for some good turns of phrase, you know. Cutting things to ribbons, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Yes, I'm a little bit old school, but there's no school like the old school. So Algonquin playing right to left and kicking off. And Belmont to receive, coming forward. Ooh, nice. Men, well, Owen sends it high. And the Algonquin 15, who's run very well in the first half, takes yeah. it up to the 46. That was a great return by the 15. And as I was saying to Coach McCabe, the decibel level at Harris Field goes <laughs> way up when the girls team has finished practice and joins us, and we're happy to hear it. Yeah, it's exciting to, uh, it's exciting to end a little early and walk, walk over to watch the boys play. So knock on by Algonquin, mishandled the ball, and it'll be scrummed down to Belmont. How have these scrums been going so far? Very well, Belmont's had the advantage, but Algonquin's certainly a, a big, powerful scrum and um, holding their own. Yeah, they look like a big pack, so I'm excited to see this. Size and weight certainly a factor in the scrum, but also positioning. Yeah. Beautiful skip. There's Wyatt oh, into wow. space. Out to Owen, back inside. Ball's bobbled around a little bit. Ooh. A little frantic in that wide channel. 
but great movement up that sideline. That's awesome. Yeah, nice ball movement by the Marauders. But then bobbled forward and scrummed down to Algonquin right here at the touchline. Well, Kate, it was uh, been telling the viewers that it's just been it was just a great trip we had to Washington D.C. with about 70 of the players, and so nice to see the girls and boys able to be one community and just relax and have some fun together. So, yes, so much fun. I mean, even the sightseeing and the rugby, it was awesome to bring the full club down there, and just some amazing rugby being played, um, not just by Belmont but by all the teams at Gonzaga Rugby Classic. So again, Algonquin looking to send their forwards ahead, crashing ahead. They do get it out to the back line. Yeah, they've got some great line runners here, some strike lines, good feet it through contact. So Kate, explain to folks what a strike line might be. So it looks like somebody, you know, like the that ball's coming out and it's uh, designed for a person that's running a hard line at an angle, trying to exploit a gap or create a gap. Um, and they're doing a great job of keeping their feet pumping through that contact to try and get as many meters as they can. But Bye. the Belmont defense, Crashing yeah. ahead and unfortunately looked like perhaps was that offside called? Or oh off the off the feet in the ruck. Yeah. Yeah. But well met by the Belmont defensive line, which Definitely. was not giving up any gaps. So one of the many rules in rugby and that ball oh it does dribble oh. into touch. So from that penalty, they get to get that line out further up the field. It's an attacking advantage for Algonquin. Plus, well, I always love a line out. Yeah, of course, as forwards <laughs> we would. Exactly. You know? <laughs> the line out really a, a complex uh, piece of uh, piece of coordination with a lot of movement and and lifting. Just a lot of moving moving parts there. Looks like Belmont has stolen that. Ooh. Oh, what Enzo an offload. Crashes, offloads, beautiful play by Belmont. Belmont rucking well. And space seen behind. Nice kick. Um. And the 15 from Algonquin, Ooh. once again handling. Collecting that ball well and returning it. Preston Biamu, the eight for Algonquin. And uh, Belmont called for throwing that ball away. Uh, sort of an unsportsmanlike conduct call. Yeah, that's an extra 10 meters for Algonquin on that penalty. So a little bit undisciplined by the Marauders. And Don Jennings making sure they know it. And now we're back to a line out here on this side. So let's see how this one goes. Belmont able to steal the last one. Oh. Nice line out by Algonquin. Yeah. Hard run by the number five. Keeps his feet moving. And Algonquin on the attack. Yeah. Ooh. Big hit. Big hit out on that wing. And back to that strike runner right in the center. They've got, they've got good leg pump through the contact. And again. Penalty advantage being played. No, no, look clean. James. James taking that into contact. 
Looked like he might try to kick that, but then made the smart move to tuck it, go to ground and recycle the ball. James is a scrum half, so he's at the bottom of the ruck. The Belmont forwards will pick and go a couple of times here, try to reset things, give the backs a chance to uh, get organized. Yeah. James with the box kick, yeah. beautiful box kick. Wow, nicely done. Clearing some of that pressure out of their half. But it went directly into touch, so uh, that ball will come all the way back to the 32, and it'll be Algonquin line out. Oh, no. <laughs> Just an unlucky bounce. So nice box kick by James, but uh, if you are outside of the 22-meter mark, and that ball goes uh, directly into touch. It comes back to the point of the kick. So they try a short line out, yeah. which uh, is unfortunately bobbled, and that'll. But see, that's what I love about the line out is there's so many options, yeah. right? Like we've got jumpers, we've got you know a, a surprise uh, runner, and that's always like what's exciting about that set piece. And as we've seen a couple of times, the mall, which Belmont has executed very effectively a couple times this game. Oh, nice. I love a mall. <laughs> love a mall. We've got to get a backup here to commentate with you, or else you and I are just going to talk all about set pieces. Uh, all about the forward play, exactly. yes. Exactly. Well, there the backs have it. Yeah. Nice, nice kick oh. over the top. Oh, and handled well there by Algonquin. Keeping their feet. Well, the second half has been quite the contest between the 22s, both sides. Much more even than that first half, that's yeah. for sure, yep. His hands getting it outside of the defensive wall. That number one, always coming in. Oof. Offsides called. And A Algonquin tap. taps and goes. Smart play by Algonquin. Well done by that defensive wall. Nice pace into that rock by the Algonquin 18. Oh, 15, excuse me. Belmont penalized again for offsides. So the Marauders giving up a lot of meters here on penalties. Tap and go. Now Gwankoma wants to continue to run those forwards ahead. This comes out to the backs. Oh, with a quick chip kick. Knocked on, unfortunately, by the Marauders. So it'll be scrummed down to White. Yeah. Playing in here at uh, just inside the 22. I feel like that's one of the first times we've talked about being inside of the 22, so that's some good pressure. Algonquin with a good attacking position here. Marauders looking to keep them out of the try zone and off the scoreboard with about 46 minutes gone. Belmont Scrum pushes back, but Algonquin manages to feed it. The 15, Ooh. nice pass out to the wing. out to that wing, oh. who's taken into touch. Nice. So it'll be Belmont line out. That was some great 
uh, edge defense by Belmont there. Kate, say a little bit more about edge defense and using that sideline as a as an extra defensive player. That's what we often talk about. Yeah, I think it, there it's it's hard to read sometimes. You could see the Algonquin 15 came in as an inserting option um, behind the inside and outside center, and so there's a slight mismatch on defense. The uh, two Belmont players out there did a good job of hurting. Uh, the Algonquin 15 and the wing towards the sideline and then driving them out of bounds to change possession of the ball. And this is a Belmont lineup. Well taken. Yeah. Good lineup by Belmont. And a mall. Wow. The mall inside the 22. Ooh. Oh. James. James is away. Yeah. Support is there. Nice. Nice job by Belmont. Pick and go. Crashing ahead. Good Pick and go security. again. Really testing that Algonquin defensive line there. And now hopefully getting it into some space. Nice ball, nice ball. Owen fights back in. Nice phases yeah. by Belmont, quick ball oh, wow. to the outside. And again. Sideline to sideline. Beautiful rugby. Yeah. That's lovely. Beautiful rugby by the Marauders there. Coach McCabe said, moving all the way across the field and then back again. Yeah, and that's really beautiful interplay between the forwards and the backs uh, as they, you know, hit up those those striking forward pods in the center, and they still got it out to the backs on the other side of the field. That's, that's some great play there. And Wyatt and Owen with that great uh, movement up the sideline on this near sideline. 2v1s, I love that. So despite the injuries to the Belmont squad, this uh, team tonight playing uh, really connected rugby, anticipating each other well, uh, really, um, you know, looking like a group of kids that, uh, you know, who they are, uh, which is uh, very, very well uh, coached, very, very well rehearsed um, uh, and, and trying, connected team. Yeah, and trying different things, right? Like each of those phases um, and each of those attacking series looked different. So when something didn't work, they're trying something different to move the defense. That's always exciting to see, yeah. especially when you have newer players that are slotting into positions that they haven't gotten to play before. It's really exciting. But credit to Algonquin, they held that for you know 15 minutes and got really close to scoring themselves there. So this half is by no means over. Definitely true. Algonquin side certainly come to play and showing, as you've uh, mentioned, a lot of nice stuff of their own. Yeah. Oh, good groundwork by the Algonquin 15 there. Yeah, so the Algonquin 15 uh, got kind of turned around but managed to spin and present that ball really well. And to the outside, there's a little space out there. Ooh. That solid attempt by the 13 to keep the ball in play as he was being herded out to the sideline. Yeah, the 13, I hope I'm saying this right, Kemuel Montañez. Running that hard line just just got misdirected to the sidelines. Here we go with the Belmont line out. Let's see what they choose to do with it. Ooh, going long. Bobbled. Yep. Playing knock on advantage.
And we'll come back uh, for the scrum with no advantage gained. Peter, did you talk about the advantage play? I haven't. That's a good opportunity. Yeah. Please. Oh, I wasn't going to talk about oh, it. Oh, <laughs> so uh, in either a knock-on situation where the ball has gone forward uh, and the other team has recovered, or in a penalty situation where uh, the the um, uh, where the ball has turned over to the other team, the ref will allow play for a period of time. Uh, until uh, the ball either reaches the, the um, advantage point uh, or a period of time has elapsed. Um, and if it gets held up or, uh, or goes to ground again, uh, then you'll come back for either the scrum or the penalty uh, to the point of the infraction. It's one of the nice things about the game that keeps the flow of the game moving so, mm -hmm. so that we're not hearing the whistle all the time. So Algonquin. With a knock-on that they reclaimed, and thus an immediate scrum. <laughs> so I don't think we've announced the back line for Algonquin. At number nine, Jack Wallace, uh, the scrum half. Nick Southey is the fly half. John Lozieu. At uh, one of the wings, the inside center, Jordan Reyes. Outside center, Kemuel Montañez. The other wing is Gavin Murphy, and the fullback is David Downey. And they've been doing a great job attacking on both sides of the, uh, of the field, trying to exploit that space that their forwards are creating by crashing in the center. We do have some substitutions uh, in for Belmont now. RTM, yes, I am. Michael Farah is on. I think there was one other. That might be it for now. 21 maybe? Oh yeah, uh, Gerald. Gerald Kuka. Yeah. It's always good to get those changes in the, in the scrum, right? A few too many of those in the Tight five starts slowing down, so it's nice to get fresh legs on the field. Totally, and the forwards, uh, you know, with so much uh, work in those scrums and in the set pieces, uh, and the big guys, uh, really nice to get refreshed, as you said. Yeah. So, Algonquin, Belmont keeping the ball in play, but it's, hmm. Got to be into touch. There. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. And there it is, Algonquin using the sideline as that final defender as well. So it'll be uh, Algonquin line out playing out of their side of the field at about the 32. About 16 minutes left here on the clock. Harris Field. This second half, a lot tighter than the first one. Yeah, absolutely. Ooh. Belmont, Billy, able to get in front of it, steals the ball. Great turnover. Forwards crash ahead, nothing there. And the ball spins to the backs. Jediah, yeah. out. Oh, wow. Nice run. Wyatt, Ooh. hit once, driven back. But manages to get the ball off. It's a great launch out of the Algonquin defense. Oh, and just unfortunately knocked forward in contact. So they'll go, they again playing the advantage there. Uh, no advantage gained, Algonquin with the scrum at about the 10. Yeah, that was a nice bit of footwork by, and I, I don't know if it was our inside center or outside center, but just getting around the defensive wall um, that was coming up so hard. So that was, that was awesome.
So Algonquin with this uh, sub, Joe Escobar coming on, if my substitution list is correct. For the 15, David Downey, who's had a very good game tonight. Algonquin sends it high, gathered there. Belmont player manages to keep his feet till help can arrive. There goes Enzo, offloads nicely to Billy. Billy, good work. Ball's clean to the Marauders. Nice. Comes out Jack, shows and goes. That's the play he scored on. Good work to get right back to where there was some support to ruck for him. Oh, but with the poach for Algonquin. Look, knocked forward by Algonquin. Scrum to Belmont, that right like in front of the post yeah. here. So talk about Belmont options here at midfield, <laughs> Coach. I know what the eight man and me would want to do here. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be very excited about this. Uh, yeah. This is the perfect opportunity for the eight man, the person at the back of the scrum, to pick up that ball and just run a hard line right at that try line. Um, but there's a couple of opportunities. They can also pick and pop to the weak side. Um, you know, there's there's only one wing and fullback over there, or fly half over there, and so they have an attacking platform there, which is exactly what they choose to do. So Belmont with the split backs, and uh, penalty, penalty against Belmont. Didn't see what the infraction was, covered by the tent. <laughs> So that's an unfortunate uh, missed opportunity. And Algonquin Kicks finds the touch out. line. And relieves some pressure on their try line there. That was well kicked to get some space. But still only at about 15 meters out, so I'm sure they're still going to be looking to get some more space away from their try line here. Elliot Lowry has come on the backs uh, for Belmont. Another substitution. And not straight yeah. in the lineout. So that ball has to go down the middle of the channel in the lineout. And the Algonquin player uh, threw it to, to one side. So Belmont will take the scrum here. And again, very good attacking position for the Marauders. Yeah, they get a redo here, right? A little more space out, not not quite the five meter scrum, but let's, they have, still have a lot of options for what they can choose to do here. So close to the scoring jar line. So now with only one defender here on this weak side of the scrum, I would expect to see the eight man pick and see if the, yep, yeah. indeed they try it, Josh. Keeps his legs going. Yeah, nice job by the Algonquin Six to really wrap up the Belmont Eight, Josh, and, and prevent that, that forward momentum. But not rolling away. Uh, Algonquin player uh, unable to get out of that ruck. And so uh, we're going to find touch here for another Belmont line out. And I would anticipate them all try and drive that ball over for a forward try here. Yeah, anything to keep that ball in possession for as long as possible. Really suck in as many players as you can into that rolling ball there. And we're just, just taking over into the final 10 minutes of the match. Billy controls it well. Indeed, they go to the mall. Belmont drives, drives, heading towards the touch line. They'll want to keep this in. And they go over for the try. So the Belmont forward pack 
pushing Algonquin back and over the try line, scoring another one. Off of the mall. What's well, been very popular this year in the, the Six Nations contest. I feel like I've read, read so many articles about all of these different countries scoring off of the mall and coming up with different mall plays. So, you know, Belmont's right on trend. <laughs> very, uh, it's a very powerful attacking platform, uh, the mall. When you get it going, it's extremely hard to stop. Uh, and even uh, even our uh, our developmental team, our C-Squad, was uh, was uh, working on the mall today. So we'll, we're going to see if the... The young, young players can <laughs> get that into their repertoire in an upcoming game. That's good. I see you're starting them young, so, you know, when it's their time under the lights, they're running all the same moves here. <laughs> That's it. Well, it is really gratifying as, as a coach of the younger players to see them move up and, uh, and you know, really gain in skill and, and make, make contributions at the, at the varsity level. Yeah, Great kick. It by Jack, slots it through, right down the middle, making it 40 to nothing. Belmont here with about eight minutes left to play. This has been a beautiful night too. Gorgeous, yeah. gorgeous night for rugby. Perfect temperature for those on the field. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Yeah. A little chilly for us. <laughs> <laughs> but but no problem. <laughs> so Algonquin the uh, the runners up in uh, last year's Division 2 uh, state final. Certainly came to play tonight giving it their all till the last whistle. And more than that, really well organized and still running really hard lines pushing through every point of contact. This is a great uh, contest between these two. RTM takes it hard. Jack sees space behind. Long kick back. Bobbled in the backfield by Algonquin. Don says it got knocked forward. Mm. Looked like it might have gone backwards from our angle, I but, know. but, <laughs> but you can, so there's no fighting it. with the ref. There is so. no fighting with the ref. One of the nice things about rugby is the respect that is shown to the sir or the ma'am on the field. Absolutely. Really is uh, really is remarkable. Uh, what good manners such rough players have. Yes, absolutely. And both of these sides just taking the call, setting up the next phase. Pretty pretty clean game tonight. Most of the penalties, you know, offsides or uh, held in, uh, nothing, uh, nothing egregious. Beautiful play there. Yeah. Who's 18? Brian McCarthy on for the Marauders, making a difference here. Yeah. And Billy away wow. and scores a try. That was nice. It's like he could just see that inside seam and kept running through it. Beautiful try, Billy Hendrickson. Yeah, great pace. But back to that, um, sorry, you said Brian McCarthy. That was really well done that, that there was like a, you know, maybe a, a missed catch or a, a bobbled throw. And um, as he had to turn awkwardly to catch it, he just changed his entire line of run and made something else happen. That was really impressive. As we're talking about the sort of dynamism in rugby and how fluid the game is, so you constantly are adjusting and uh, reading what's happening around you. Um, you know, it's never t there. There aren't two identical moments in any rugby game. Everything is shifting all the time, and so the adaptability um, uh, of rugby players is really quite something. It is really impressive. I think people always want, you know, there to be a play or like to know exactly scripted how this is going to turn out. And it's always like, no, this just sets you up for options. And then you have to make that decision based on what's on the field. And that was a perfect example of that um, from both of those players. Just, just really well read and adapted to. 
So Jack sends another one through, and it's 47 to nothing here uh, with about uh, four and a half minutes left on the clock. So uh, one of the things showing up here in the last uh, quarter of the game is really, I think, fitness. Uh, and Belmont's fitness is um, really uh, impressive. Oh, short kick, but handled there. Belmont aware and in support. I think that was our team bringing that in. Our team, yep. So good contributions by the reserve players. Oh, kicked by Jack. But well taken by the replacement 15. Preston Diamu has had a good game for Algonquin. Cares again. Wow. Ooh. <laughs> Lots of hard pressure on that nine, but he still manages to get that ball back. Look at that attacking defensive line. And that's a big thing we always talk about. Defense is still an attacking opportunity. You're just trying to move up and take the space, find the opportunity to create a turnover. And Absolutely. And play solid defense, solid defense, solid defense. You are bound to, to force a mistake on the other side like that. Yeah. And then you have to be ready to make the turn to offense quickly uh, and make use of those opportunities. Part of that dynamic nature of rugby. Absolutely. So high tackle called on Belmont. I think that was actually a holding on. Oh, holding on, sorry. Yeah. Uh, the uh, the Algonquin fans wanted it to be a high tackle called. Tap and go. And Algonquin wanting to uh, maintain possession here, running hard at Belmont. Yeah. No let up by White. Oh, little chip over the top. Oh, oh. Wow. <laughs> Handled well there by Tamar, your captain tonight, Tamar Sahay. A little bit bobbled, but then well collected. Cena on for Belmont in reserve. Good to see Cena getting some minutes here this evening. Uh, signaling for that pick and go right there. Just trying to get our nine back into position. Maybe looking to ice a little time off the clock as well. Yeah, you could be right. And here comes the ball. So Matt Murphy on at scrum half. Beautiful kick over the top. Uh, somebody played somebody without the ball over there, <laughs> Kate. I don't know what know. happened there, but <laughs> Don let him go. Yeah, I think it was two players coming really hard. <laughs> Both with the same intent there. Yeah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Man, that number one has been crashing Yeah, he all really day. has been carrying that ball a lot. Yeah. He'll be tired. He will be. Another bus ride home. But what, a, what fight there. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, really good. One of the great things about rugby is that big guys get to carry the ball. <laughs> yes. Big and girls. And girls. And yes. girls. And uh, <laughs> so it's you know something that uh, uh, I certainly appreciated about the game. Yeah, definitely a little different than football. Yeah. American football. So <laughs> get a lot of fo football players who come over to rugby and they haven't. They haven't been able to actually contribute offensively in that way and uh, and really enjoy it. Yeah. That is one of those fun things, you know? Everyone everyone catches, everyone passes, everyone tackles, yeah. everyone's doing all the work yeah. in different spaces, but, but it's a lot of fun. And with time gone, Algonquin yeah. kicks, kicks the ball into touch and some nice handshakes and hugs on the field. So the final score, Belmont 47, Algonquin nothing.
here at Harris Field. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, uh, Coach McCabe, for joining yeah. me on the mic tonight. Thanks for having me. And uh, always a pleasure. We'll see you next time, folks. Mm -hmm.